And with the nightclubs, there obviously EV After Dark in particular is, is very famous and renowned. So with in LA in particular, the clubs go in and out of business so much. Mm -hmm. And they change names, they change locations, they do all this other stuff. So with that, you have that just happening in general, then you have like the streets, you got violence, you got popularity, different things changing all the time. How do you think you were able to keep that name and that club sustainable for so long. Well, you know, I had uh, a lot of good street relationships, man. You know, I'm from the neighborhood, first of all. I grew up in the neighborhood from and even up to dark. The old man who owned the club, he we all lived in the same block. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a relationship throughout the whole neighborhood. And uh, then I had gang, gang and non-gang, not affiliates, but friends, mm -hmm. you know, who made sure nobody messed with us, you know? That helps. It always helps to have know somebody <laughs> that will go out and will pass for you. <laughs> right. So we had I had a couple of buddies that uh, just hey man they, they vowed from the day one man don't worry about this right here we got this right here. we gonna, we got you got this right here okay? okay we appreciate what you're doing for the community and at that time man it was, uh, it was the streets were a lot different there was a lot more sense of loyalty when it came to people that was trying to do something and even as a kid I was growing up uh, the gangbangers in my neighborhood wouldn't let me be involved in certain things, they knew I wasn't about that. Mm -hmm. They would, you know, man, go ahead, this ain't for you. And it's the same thing here, man, I, I see what you're doing. We got the we, we got the streets covered, you just take care of the inside, okay? And it worked for us. It was a good, you know, e excellent team effort. And why do you think things change so much? Uh, a lot of the youngsters that come about don't know the history of what we've done and everybody's trying to make a reputation for themselves, not knowing that you're talking to somebody who has already put the work in to allow you to be where you are, and the disrespect comes in, and you just don't want to. No, at, at my age, I ain't trying to go there. I ain't not trying to catch no case. Right. So you know, it's just, hey man, I, I don't bother this no more. It's cool. And uh, in addition, as the clubs were going and as things were transitioning, one of the things I thought that was amazing, and I'd only read about it, and to get more detail from it in the book was the West Coast distribution uh, yeah. network that you guys had established. So I wanted you to explain what it was and who was involved. Well, Makota came, at one point in time, Makota took off a, a, some new partners that were, uh, I call them the Sopranos of the record industry, okay? And things changed dramatically around Makota and everybody started leaving. I left first. Okay. I came back. I was the first one to leave, first one to come back. When I came back, things had changed dramatically and um, they pretty much put him out of business, and we had still had the name, we still had the label. So I got, I created this is something. I, I got to blow my horn, toot, 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 toot. <laughs> uh, I created the, uh, came up with the idea of us forming our own record distributing company, West Coast Record Distributors. So I got with Rudy from the LA Dream Team, Egyptian Lover, my boy Unknown, and we, and me and Atrin, we drove to um, Palm Springs to the. Um, um, NARM, NAM, NARM, to okay. NARM, and met with all the distributors, and they all said they would buy from us. Okay. Then we came back, met with Steve Sheldon at Rainbow Records. He said he would press our records. He gave us all a um, $25,000 line of credit a piece without a Dunn Street, without a TRW, just on our label alone. Okay. And then we cut a deal with uh, another company in Burbank called California Record Distributors, George Hocutt. And he agreed to be our anchor distributor for California to make sure that Steve got paid. So we had a, we put together this unique deal. Didn't need a lot of money. Right. Didn't need a lot of money. And uh, we formed West Coast Record Distributors. And through West Coast Record Distributors, we distributed the Compton Compilation, uh, Rodney Owen, Joe Cody's first record, Me and Joe. We broke um, JJ Fast, Supersonic, uh, King T's first record, um, uh, along with the. Uh, a few more acts that I can't think of right now, but we did a lot in that 18 month period till we all went crazy and um, decided we had to go our own separate ways. We made a million, but we grossed over a million bucks the first year. So why didn't it work? Egos. Hmm. You got young cats, all of us were superstars in our own minds. And you couldn't tell us that we needed to sit down and put our egos at the front door and come get this money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, nobody was, what we had done was so unprecedented, nobody could tell us that we were stupid. Mm. Okay, that we, we had a gold mine that nobody could tell us we had a gold mine and just keep digging this gold as opposed to trying to see who got the biggest pile. You know, and that's, uh, that was something that I regret. Because what we did then, we set the precedent for everybody else. 
Right. Everybody else started doing the same thing, but they had one problem that we didn't have. We already had we, it, our, our distributing company was 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 made by hit makers. We all had hits. Turn off lights was out. Was just got dropped. Egypt was a hit maker. Unknown. L. A. Dream Team. We all hit makers. Right. So. You, we weren't, can, you weren't starting from scratch. We weren't starting from scratch. We weren't trying to break nobody. We were already broken axe. Mm -hmm. Broke axe. So all we had to do was keep fill the pipeline. But because, you know, sometimes record sales fluctuate and egos do too. <laughs> all right. So, you know, on a bad day, somebody might get cussed out. And I didn't want to hear it. Okay. So I, you might get cussed out by me. Straight out of Compton. That, that's, I, you might have one of them Lonzo moments. So, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, we had to, uh, we decided to go our separate ways. And uh, again, that was probably one of the biggest mistakes we ever made because somebody would have bought it for quite a bit of money if we just set our ass, set, set our ass down long enough. Well, you live and you learn. And, yes, now, and now you've expanded doing uh, multimedia. So yes, So bring man. everybody yes, else up to speed. What's going on? Um, I have a, a hot YouTube channel, NWA Stories with Lonzo on YouTube. Um, you can find me on social media, Real Lonzo NWA. Uh, you can contact me, uh, Real Lonzo NWA Gmail. I'm on Twitter, all that Real, Real Lonzo NWA. But check out my YouTube channel. Check out my audio book. Now, if you, if you like reading, that's fine. It's on Amazon. But if you want to have uh, something to ride to, not only am I uh, doing the audio book, but I'm, it's also set to music, all original tracks. So you can get your ride on, get your get your education on, and your groove on all at the same time. Audio book is on CD Baby. Again, it's not without Alonzo on CD Baby. Yeah, and make sure to buy it and support it because I did. And the thing, the great thing about it is, no matter what your level of knowledge is about this stuff, you're going to learn some some new things. And that that was what was great to me about buying the book and, and reading NWA because, you know, it's a lot of information and it also puts a lot of things into context and how you break down a lot of your history but then everything that you were affiliated with and that's why hopefully Alonzo will come back because we got to have to do another section you, of this you interview, got it. man. You got it. Because we got, it's a lot more to talk about but uh, we appreciate you coming through today, I appreciate sir. it. And uh, make sure you pick up NWA, Not Without Alonzo. He's in the building. I'm Soren Baker. Unique access. Peace. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was. I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.